Let's talk about rendering for a minute. I was asked the question, what is this render region and these buckets? If you select in your shader tree, if you select your render tab and you select your properties under frame, you'll see there's a buckets disclosure triangle and a region disclosure triangle. So let's just go ahead and re render this out real quick through this lizard here. Okay. Now you can see that what it's going to take a good 30 seconds for my machine to render this textured lizard. So let it go through here and render real quick. And this is great, you know, I mean, Modal has a fast renderer, a good looking renderer, but sometimes it's just not cool to wait for the whole thing to re-render re if you just want to look at its eyeball. You know, what if you've made some changes to its eyeball and you don't want to have to re-render the whole scene just to look at his eyeball, okay? So, um, as you can see, that took about 30 seconds to render. So let's, let's close this window. I'm going to re-render this, but I want to hit Abort Render right here. There's an Abort Render button. So I'm going I'm to click that, like that, and that aborts my render. Now all I have to do is click and drag for my render region. Say I want to render just his part of his head up here. I'll click and drag like this and let go. Now I've got this little box and my little render region thing clicked on here. And you can see it's got those coordinates in. Now that I've got that, any time that I want to just render that section, all I have to do is re-render it. So I'll hit F9 and re-render. You see, it's just going to re-render that one little box there. It's not going to re-render the whole thing, which is what I want to do if I'm just looking at the eye of something. You can see that took 10 seconds compared to 30. You can even, uh, if, you, if you want to move that render region, you can click and drag it around, or you can uncheck the render region box, and it goes away. And you can redraw. Okay, I'm just going to draw this little bitty part right here, stick it right here on the eye, re-render you can see that's not going to take no time compared to having to wait for the whole thing okay so there we go five seconds that is what the render region is all about okay now these buckets doesn't really matter one way or the other okay um, this is the size of your buckets as you can see I, I keep mine set to about 15 okay and you'll notice when mine renders, my buckets are a little smaller, probably than yours, from um, the factory or you know stock settings. It's 40 and 40, and I've moved mine down to 15. And you can see how small my buckets are. Okay. And I've also got this bucket order here, which is rendering it in columns, which is from left to right, in kind of column type view. It's going up and down and rendering. If you notice. Okay. That was 32 seconds. Now we can go to random, okay? And we can put our bucket size up to 40, where it was originally, okay, in render. Now you see we're gonna get a random pattern, because I've got it set to random, and my buckets are gonna be a lot bigger. Now depending on your render scene, your bucket sizes and stuff can save you a little bit of time, not much. Okay, now as you can see, it's randomly rendering this in with a bucket size of 40, which is where it usually is set at. And as you can see, there's not a real big difference in render time. I mean, minuscule. But sometimes, if you change the bucket size and stuff, you can get a few tenths of a second. Okay, now as you can see, 32.8 seconds when I went random with a bucket size of 40. When I went with columns and a bucket size of 15, you'll see it's 32 seconds. Okay? That's with a bucket size of 15 set to columns. With a bucket size of 40 set to random, it's 32.8 seconds. So it's almost a second quicker by using smaller buckets. So, um,. Let's drop the bucket size down to even slower, lower than that to 10. I had it set on 15. Let's set it on 10, and let's make our bucket order in the rows. And let's hit F9 to re-render. Now, I have found on this scene that a bucket size of about 15 is the best 
when I get down to 10, I start losing about half a second, and I go over 15, I start losing about a half a second. I have noticed that it doesn't really make a difference in if you use rows, columns, spiral, random. Um, sometimes I've saved a couple tenths of a second by using columns or something, but for the most part, that just depends on really what you how you like to watch it render. Bucket size can make a difference. Now you see we got 31.9 seconds when we went in rows like that. Okay, 31.9 seconds, 32.8 seconds last time. Okay and 32 seconds the time before that. So, considering this one is 31.9, it's one-tenth of a second quicker in render time when I lowered my bucket size to 10 and rendered in rows. If I render randomly, let's see if that improves time any. And as you can see, these are just tenths of seconds. It's, it's not going to make a difference. I mean, it's really probably not even worth fooling with. It's just fun to go in here and experiment and and, and just see what different rendering ways and different bucket sizes can save you. You know, I haven't saved no more than a second from, from changing my bucket sizes and my bucket orders, but I have saved up to a second before from experimenting and finding the right combination for the right scene. You know, each scene is different. But 31.9 is the fastest time we've found so far. Okay, and there's 31.9 seconds. So it looks like the bucket size of 10 is going to be the best for this scene. Let me put it back up to, uh, let's, let's raise it up to 25 or 30 and render it. As you can see now, the bucket size of 10, 31.9 seconds. Let's do it with the bucket size of 30, which is twice, almost, or a little over double what we was using before. And random looks really cool. I'm not real big on the random. I like the, the columns, but random's pretty cool too. See, 32.2 seconds. So when my buckets were at 15, I rendered at 31.9. So I saved three tenths of a second by lowering my bucket size to 15. Now you can experiment. You might be able to save more than a second. I've never been able to save more than about a second in render times, okay? Maybe the bigger the scene, the, the, the more you'll save, but this 15 bucket size here isn't the magic number. It, it works for this scene, but in my next scene, I might get a better time by using a bucket size of 25. It's just something you have to uh, experiment with. And like I said, considering at the most you're going to be saving a second, it's probably more fun for people to adjust and play with just for their own, you know, just for their own interests than it is really going to improve your work and help your render times. But I just wanted to show you what those two little sections are, the render region and the buckets. Those two things can help increase your render times, especially the render region if you're just looking at a certain point. So um, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.